Hello and welcome to this Squid Short. Today we're going to demonstrate a solution to a common business challenge, and that is bringing data from across multiple objects or sources into a single screen. We're going to solve this problem by using Squid to build a cross-object detail drawer. And this is an important outcome because it allows users to see the data they need to see when and where they need to see it. The graphic below illustrates the value. So when the business can provide a humanized and intuitive user experience, user adoption increases, and that leads to better data quality and metrics, which lead to better business decisions, uh, which is obviously really important. Most tools won't allow you to go across object or even data sources, but in the next four minutes, we'll work through the process of using Squid to quickly build this solution without writing any code. We'll start off with a tailor-made opportunity management page created using Squid. And the requirement from the business is visibility into the contacts, tasks, and products from the opportunity list page without needing to open individual opportunity detail pages or navigate away from the page. They want to be able to not only see the data for each opportunity, but create, edit, and delete that data if necessary. So let's jump into the App Composer and begin configuring. I went ahead and created our first two models, but we still need to bring in contact data. So I'll hit the plus sign here to add another model to our page. We'll call this op drawer contacts. And I'm using Salesforce as the data source here, but keep in mind that you can use squid models to display data from additional data sources on the same page as well. I'm gonna go for the opportunity contact role object. I don't need to query this on page load because we don't need the data when the page loads. And now I'll go ahead and grab the fields. So I'm going to get contact ID, role, whether or not the contact is primary, as well as opportunity ID. And we'll use that for setting some context later. Now that I have my fields, I'll put a condition on the model to ensure that we're only going to display the contacts that are on the opportunity that the user has clicked on. So we'll get opportunity ID is blank and this condition we're going to put that on filterable default off so i'll save that and now this is really cool instead of writing custom code we're going to use a squids action framework and a row action to go and get the data from each of those objects and bring them in so that we can have our cross object detail drawer so i've added the row action already by clicking this plus sign and then once we have this row action i can go in and configure what happens when the user clicks and so we've got our first couple models being activated and their conditions passed in, but we just created a new model, so we need another action. Hit the plus sign there. We'll bring this up into the sequence, and we will have this action type be activate and set value of model condition. Select the model we just built, the condition that we created, we'll choose that, and now we'll choose the opportunity ID. Squid will take care of the merge syntax. You see the double curly braces there. And because we're not querying any of these models on page load, we need to make sure we're querying them now. And so the action of query models, we just need to tick this box and include the contact model that we just built. And now we can configure our drawer. So I'll double click here. I've already dragged a tab set into this uh, drawer with our tasks and products. So let's add a new tab and I'll call this tab contacts. And now going over to our library of components, I'm gonna get the table component. I'm gonna drag that into the page, make sure that it's pointed at the model that we're working with, that's correct. And now I'm gonna add the fields from that model. So contact ID, primary, and role. If you wanna rearrange the order of the fields, it's really easy to do. You can just drag and drop right there. Uh, contact ID is not going to look great in the UI. Uh, name would make more sense, so we can change the label right there. Uh, I'm going to save this. One thing we need to do before we're ready to, to test this out is to make sure that our context is persistent when we have even multiple drawers open at the same time. And so in order to do that, I've selected the table component. I see the properties available to me for that component, including context. So we'll go over there, we'll add some context, and we'll say we're opportunity ID. Uh, of the record is equal to the ID of the row in context. So I'll go ahead and save that and now let's preview our page. 
Okay, so here's our page. Uh, here's the detailed drawer. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that. And with one click, now the action framework is running through and is grabbing the data for this opportunity across these objects. So I can see the products that are being positioned. I can see the contacts that are on this account. I can go ahead and add a contact if I need to. So let's go ahead and add a role. Decision maker, we'll leave it as not primary. I can save that there. Products. Again, being able to add those directly from here, same with tasks. And because the context is persistent, how we set that up on the table component, I can have multiple drawers open at the same time and see uh, the details for those particular opportunities. So there is a short look at how Squid can solve the business need of being able to interact with data across multiple objects and all without writing any code. So there's a few resources here on the screen, including documentation on building your own detailed drawers and some exciting highlights of our upcoming major release, Squid Spark. And finally, this was a Squid short. So if you want a bit of a deeper dive into how you can use Squid to design and create applications for your unique business processes, request a demo and we can dive in deeper with you. Thanks so much for watching.